Welcome back. Today we're talking about maps, how to create maps using R. We're going to be using the SF package. Super duper easy to use. You're going to love this. Let's do it. Boom shakalaka. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Okay, so if you want to be able to make maps like this, you're going to need a couple of packages on board. Of course, the Tidyverse, which comes with ggplot. So you're going to want that on your computer, of course, needless to say. SF, that is the package that we're going to use to create the actual maps. And it plays nicely with ggplot, which you're going to see in just a minute. So happy days. GG themes, that's a lovely package that gives you some themes and a maps theme that I'm going to show you that uh, makes things look pretty. And in Natural Earth, this is a package that comes with map data that you can use at home so you can replicate everything that I'm doing at home on your computer. That's the best way to learn. Practice, practice, practice. And it also comes with some functions that makes getting the data onto your computer in the right kind of format, etc, etc. Super duper easy. So stick with me. Let's do this. I was going to say boom shakalaka again. Okay, I'll say it. Boom shakalaka. So the first map we're going to create is a map of the whole world. And you can see in the legend on the side here that I have colored the countries by the income group. I'm going to show you the code that I use to create this map so you can do this at home. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a data object called world, right? And we've got a function here called NE countries. NE countries is a function that comes with the N natural earth uh, package, right? So we said we've already uh, installed and loaded the N natural earth package. That's giving us the data that we need. The data is there, the, well, the world data, the geospatial data, but we need to tell our in what format we want that data right the first argument is scale scale medium that is the granularity that geospatial data come that you want it and in this case medium is just fine and then return class sf remember we said we're going to be using the sf simple features package to draw our maps so it's going to return a data set that we can use with that particular package right and now we've created an object called world okay what you're seeing on the screen at the moment is bog standard uh, garden variety ggplot we're taking the object that we created which is world we're piping it into ggplot the first argument in ggplot in this case is the aesthetic and i'm going to show you in the next argument how it is that you can put this aesthetic into the geom sf uh, function if you wanted that geometry it doesn't really matter full equals income and that's because obviously we want the countries you know the color of the countries uh, filled in by the income category now this is the function that you're not familiar with if you're new to the sf package geom fill this is the geometry that that ggplot is going to use and it's going to use the the, the the geospatial data that exists in the world object that we've created to create our map at that point, if we ran the data there, it would create our map. But obviously, we've got additional steps here to make the whole thing look pretty. So let's have a look at that as well. Now, the thing that I want to show you here is, okay, everything everything on the, on the screen at the moment is pretty bog standard, uh, standard equipment, ggplot. But here, theme map, that's going to create this lovely white background. It's going to take away... Uh, all of the sort of background noise and the gray that comes with, G with ggplot very often and creates a lovely theme for your map. Okay, everything else in the code is just your usual bog standard ggplot. I'm not going to go into it in this video. I'm assuming that you, you know and understand ggplot. By the way, the code that I've got on the screen at the moment, I am going to provide in a PDF that you can download. There'll be a link at the end of the video. So if you want to go through this in detail, absolutely, by all means, do that. And if we run this code, voila, a beautiful map of the world as promised. Next. Have a look at this map of Africa here. And again, we're going to create this map of Africa using the exact same package, the exact same data. We're just going to filter by Africa. But what I want you to notice here, and the next trick that I want to teach you is the lines separating the country now are in white. So we can control that with the SF package and the thickness of the lines. I've made them quite thick and that might matter that it sort of adds to the aesthetic of the map that you're creating. So let's have a quick look at as to how to do that. Here is the code that I use to create that map. There's a couple of things that I want to point out at the moment. This is an example of why it is that I use pipe operators and filter the data object into ggplot because sometimes you want to make amendments as you go along. In this particular case, I wanted to filter the data and only extract out countries in the region of Africa. Okay, so that makes sense at the moment. You'll notice the ggplot doesn't have the aesthetic built into it like I did in the previous in the previous plot, but I've put the aesthetic, the fill equals population estimate into the geometry itself. Okay, just to prove the point that it doesn't really matter. Um, it would matter if you're doing multiple geometries and you need to decide which geometry gets which aesthetic. Okay, so that's when it might matter. That's a, another discussion. Here we've got fill equals population estimate um, uh, one uh, divided by one e to the six. So that's one times 10 to the power of six. That is just so that in my legend, I've got the population estimate per million. Okay, uh, otherwise it looks a little bit messy. Here's the stuff that I wanted to show you, right? The color of the lines, the color of the lines in the plot. I've, I've I've said are white, 
You can put any color you want in there. And line width is 0.3, and you can change that as well. So these are nice little additional arguments, and there are other arguments that come with the geometry uh, SF, GMSF. Okay, so that's quite useful to know. The other little thing to notice is right over here, I wanted population and I wanted the millions underneath the word population. So I've got downward slash in. I say downward slash, I know people say forwards and backwards, but actually it's downwards if you think that you always write from left to right. It makes more sense to me. Okay, everything else is pretty much a bog standard ggplot here. You can get the code in the PDF at the end of the video, but these are the things that I wanted to show you and that produces the lovely map that's on the screen any second now. Here's the map and you can see the populations are per million and here you've got population with million underneath it and you can see the lines are nice and thick and the lines are white as promised. Right, so here we've got a map of Sao Paulo. The color of the different regions of Sao Paulo are all done by human development index, right? So it's quite an interesting map, but what I'm wanting to talk, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna show you in the code just now is what's been done here with respect to color. There's an interesting little trick. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is that in this particular example, I've read the data in from a web page. You can get this data at this particular link. The link will be in the PDF that you can download. There'll be a link at the end of this video that you can click on and download that link. I usually just use data that is available in packages or that comes with R. This is the one exception to that. And for two reasons. Firstly, I'm wanting to show you that you can download data through these links and read them straight into a data object. And I've never really talked about that on this channel. And you can use the read R package, which comes with the tidyverse. And that allows you to read the data in, in various formats. And in this case, I've said read RDS, right? That's the function that I'm using. And that preserves some of the complexity of the data set that's necessary for geospatial data to work with the SF package. This particular data set will come back as a class SF. So it can be used straight away with ggplot and the SF package. So everything on the screen at the moment is pretty standard. ggplot, uh, the data object that we're using is Atlas. That's the one that we've created a few seconds ago. Uh, GMSF, right? That's gonna create the geometry using the geospatial data. Aesthetic, fill by human development index, right? No problem, easy peasy lemon squeezy. The line width we've said is gonna be 0.95. The color of the lines is gonna be white. Okay, everything here is pretty much same, the same as the previous graph. Now, scale fill, Fermenter. This is a really nice little function that comes with ggplot. And it's great for continuous data that you're popping into bins, which is exactly what we're doing now, right? So we've got, okay, the name, that's fine. That's what the legend's gonna be called. You get to define the breaks, right? In this case, I want breaks. The first break needs to be at 0.65. The last break needs to be at 0.95. And the increments need to be 0.05. And you'll see that that applies when we put the map back on the screen in a second. Direction equals one. Right, and that is gonna be with respect to the palette, right? You can choose from a number of palettes. I'm using this yellow, green, blue, okay? And it's gonna go from, the, you know, the smallest development index is gonna be yellow and the largest one is gonna be blue. If this direction equaled negative one, it would, go, it would just do it the other way around. And I'm actually gonna show you that in a couple of seconds. Let's do that. So as you can see on the screen at the moment, we've got the city of Sao Paulo. All of the different regions have been colored by the human development index score. The human development index score is a continuous variable, right? So we've put it into bins and we've colored the bins accordingly. And you can see at the legend at the bottom, as described in the code, the first cut is at 0.65, the last cut is at 0.95, and the increments there within are, are 0.05, right? So you get to define how it is that the bins work. And it really is a lovely way to ensure that your plot it looks and feels exactly the way you want it to. Okay, so now I've changed the direction from one to minus one, and let's have a look at what that looks like. And as you can see, it's using the same color palette, going from yellow to blue through green, but it's the, the lower score where the blue is and the higher scores are where the yellow is. Okay, so super duper nice, very easy to do. So all of this code and the link that's up there that you can download the Sao Paulo data to uh, will be in the PDF and you can download that PDF in a link that I'm gonna try and put on the screen right over there. Okay, have a great day. Don't do drugs, always do your best. Don't ever change, speak to you soon. Take care. Bye, boom, shakalaka.